Good morning everyone and welcome to Clarborough Church on this special day, Mothering Sunday. And although we're actually separated and can't be gathered here together in church, today we offer our prayers and our thanksgiving for mothers who we might sadly not be able to see today, but perhaps we'll be in contact with them in some other way. Now, Mothering Sunday is a popular day when Christians choose to use the occasion to think about all things that concern motherhood. We give thanks for the church as mother, the Virgin Mary as the mother of Jesus. We remember that God cares for us like a mother. And last but not least, we give thanks for our own mothers. Mothering Sunday is the fourth Sunday in Lent, and it's a time of special thanksgiving. It's a day in Lent when flowers usually abound outside and in our churches and when people are encouraged to share a time of refreshment in the penitential season. Of course, that perhaps isn't to be today, but wherever you are and whoever is watching this, my prayer is that actually we'll be united in spirit as we think about our mothers on this special day. Praise God who loves us. Praise God who cares. I'm going to light a candle to remind us that the love of God is like a light in our darkness. Blessed be God forever. We thank you, Lord, for the many gifts that you've given us all, for the gift of life and the protection you give us. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of loved ones and those who care for us. We thank you for the gift of homes, warmth and security. We thank you for the gifts you have given us that make our lives fun and interesting. We thank you for the gift of children of all ages and for those who nurture them. We thank you for the gift of knowing you. We thank you. Amen. I don't know where you are on your journey with God, whether or not it's a relationship that's strong in faith or whether it's a passing acquaintance. But whoever we are and wherever we are, God reaches out to us. One of the schools that I'm on the governing body of, their motto is to be the best me that I can be. And we actually know that sometimes we fall far short of being the best me that I can be, whether it's in things that we've said or things that we've thought or things that we've done. So let's just spend a few moments pondering those things. Let's remember the wrong things that we've thought, said and done, and how we haven't loved others as Christ loves us. Father, your love gives us life even before our birth. We fail to live as your children. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You call us to do good. We seek our own good. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You hear us when we cry for help, but we ignore the cries of others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus came into the world to save us from our sins. This is his gracious word. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Thanks be to God. Collect for Mothering Sunday. And so we pray. God of love, passionate and strong, tender and careful, watch over us and hold us all the days of our life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Bible reading for this morning is taken from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 2, verses 33 
to 36. And the, father's chi and the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be precious in your sight. Amen. A 102-year-old lady was asked if she had any worries. Her reply, no, not now, I have got my youngest son in an old people's home. I guess parents never stop worrying about their children. However, sometimes it's the children that worry about their parents and the things that they do. Not more so now, of course, than at a time when perhaps we'd dearly love to be able to see our mums to spend time, but perhaps they might be in isolation or uh, they might have quarantined themselves purely for their own health and well-being. But here's the story of one ten-year-old who once said, when your mum is mad at your dad, don't let her brush your hair. And a 13-year-old also learnt one of life lessons. When you get bad marks at school, show it to your mum when she's on the phone. Today is Mothering Sunday and our traditional festival dates to the 16th century when there were very few holidays and children as young as 10 were at work away from home. They would be given the day off on this mid-Lent Sunday to visit their mothers and family. Girls who were in service would bake a cake to show their mothers their new skills, the Simnel cake. What's more, as they walked home across the country, they would gather violets and other wildflowers to give to their mums as a gift and also to take to church. Today has become a day to give thanks for the care of the church and to reflect on God's loving nature. It's also a time to express thanks to our mothers and celebrate motherhood. It's natural for us to remember the happy times of childhood and those happy memories of our parents. As parents, we can remember wondering what our child would grow up to be and to do. Indeed, Mary, the mother of Jesus, treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. Surely, whenever anyone truly loves, they experience moments of pure joy and times of pain and heartache. Human relationships are never easy. And being a mother or father is never simple. To love is hard work. It means making ourselves vulnerable in self-giving, emotionally sharing in the lives of others. Susanna was the mother of John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist movement. Now she had 19 children, sadly only 10 of whom survived. As a mother, she had an enormous influence on John, more, in fact, than her husband. Samuel Wesley was rector of the parish of Epworth in Lincolnshire, and in 1709 the rectory was completely destroyed by a fire. John was just six years old at the time, and he was rescued from an upstairs window. From that time on, the conviction grew that he had been spared for a special purpose. Now, Susanna saw the fire as being a sign from God concerning her young son, John, and she vowed to be more careful of the soul of this child. Susanna was a brilliant teacher and had strong views on the upbringing of her children. In September 1724, she wrote to John, I heartily wish you were in holy orders. Well, I wonder what her thoughts were for her child. What was the degree of her influence in his life? It was to be a life of trials and triumphs, joys and sorrows. 
Do you remember when Jesus was received in the temple by Simeon, when he said, Lord, now let thou thy servant depart in peace? Well, despite Mary's joy, Simeon spoke of sorrow like a sword will pierce through your own soul too. I wonder if she remembered these incidents when she stood at the foot of the cross. Just as life is full of highs and lows, so the gospel is full of contrasts and choices. Judgment, salvation, darkness, light, suffering, healing, falsehood, truth, evil, good, hell, heaven, death, resurrection, sorrow and joy. Throughout the gospel, Jesus constantly presents us with choices and challenges. But also, we see that once we've made these choices, following him will involve a spiritual, a physical, and an emotional struggle. Joy and pain, just as Jesus experienced himself. <laughs> Life's a mixed bag, I don't need to tell you that. But through it all, Jesus offers us hope. Some find Mothering Sunday hard, some are going through tough times, but always remember the hope of future joy as well as the sorrow now. On Mothering Sunday, remember God's love and care for you. You are his precious child and he shares your joy and your pain. He is there to embrace you with his loving and healing arms and that he can give the strength that you need on your journey of faith. Remember too that he can bring new life into this world, that he can release us and our communities to discover life in all its fullness as we surrender ourselves to his love. Remember also that he offers us hope of eternal life. Do you remember the 102 year old woman I mentioned at the beginning of this chat? while she was worried about her son, how much more does our Heavenly Father worry about you and about me? Throughout our pilgrimage of faith, through the good times and the tough times, God's love is from everlasting to everlasting. He doesn't promise us an easy life, for we can never expect anything different from the experience of the Lord Jesus that we follow. Nevertheless, he does promise to be with us. Amen. One of the things that holds us together, as we heard this morning, as um, our uh, service was broadcast from the Cathedral in London, was that our faith holds us together and our creed joins us together wherever we are. So let's declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We now come to a time of prayer time in which perhaps you might have moments to ponder and to think. So let's pray. As children of a loving God who always listens to our prayers, let's pray to our Father in heaven. Perhaps after each bidding prayer, when I say God of love, you might like to join in with the words, hear our prayer. Loving God, you have given us the right to be called children of God. Help us to show your love in our homes, that they may be places of love, security and truth. God of love, hear our prayer. Loving God, Jesus, your son, was born into the family of Mary and Joseph. Bless all parents and all who care for children. Strengthen those families living under stress and may your love be known where no human love is found. Lord, we pray for families separated. 
We pray for families who are in distress at the moment because they can't be together on this day. We pray for those we know and for those we don't. God of love, hear our prayer. Loving God, we thank you for the family of the church. We pray that all may find in her their true home, that the lonely, the marginalised, the rejected may be welcomed and loved in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we pray for church communities separated. We pray for ministers trying out new technology in order to, to actually share a message of love and hope and care with one another. God of love, hear our prayers. Loving God, as we see the brokenness of our world, we pray for healing among the nations, for food where there is hunger, for freedom where there is oppression, for joy where there is pain, that your love may bring peace to all your children. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those people who are fearful. We remember your words to us. Do not be afraid, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. We pray for those people whose fear leads them to perhaps hoard food, to deny other people of what they need, who might be causing suffering to those who can't perhaps get out. We pray for all those people who aren't taking messages and news from higher authorities, from scientists, seriously. We pray that there might be some degree of common sense and thought for others. Heavenly Father, we know that at times like this, there is a sense in which we turn into self-preservation mode. We pray that we might still be considerate of our friends and neighbours. We pray for the uh, services, for the local services, the people in our NHS, the caregivers, and those who are there to actually get those who are struggling through this difficult time. God of love, hear our prayer. And now as Jesus taught his disciples, we pray together the words of the Lord's Prayer in its traditional form, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Through the prophet Isaiah, God says, As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Final prayers and thoughts on this Mothering Sunday. For the care of mothers, thanks be to God. For their patience when tested, thanks be to God. For their love when tired, thanks be to God. For their hope when despairing, thanks be to God. For their service without limit, thanks be to God. Wherever you are, whether you're with someone who is in living in your house with you, whether or not you're on your own, God's peace is with you. A prayer of blessing for you all. May the Lord who brought us to birth by his spirit strengthen us for the Christian life. May the Lord who provides for all our needs sustain us day by day. May the Lord whose end, unending love is constant as a mother's care send us out to live and work for others and may the blessing of god the father the son and the holy spirit be with us now and forever amen we go now in peace to love and serve the lord in the name of christ 
amen.